Hey guys, welcome to Baking in Books. My name is Lexi and I'm an amateur baker who loves to read. So each week I post videos of myself attempting to bake something new while also talking about a book that I have either recently read or just really love. We're not talking about Jaws, don't let my shirt confuse you. This is just what I wanted to bake in today. We already did Jaws, if you haven't seen it, it was fun, go back and watch it. But today we are going to be making chocolate chip muffins. I decided to go back to muffins because I wasn't super happy with the way that my blueberry ones turned out that video is on here too so you can check it out if you haven't seen it but I wasn't super pleased with them they came out kind of dry they weren't very moist I just I wasn't super happy with them and so I thought okay whatever the reason let's try again I've got tons of leftover chocolate chips from my chocolate chip cookie cake that I made a couple weeks ago and I'd rather just get get those used and try this again so we're gonna attempt the muffins again today fingers crossed. We're also going to be talking about The Outsider by Stephen King. I'm excited about this one. I tried something new. I actually made notes this time. Not in my book, that would be ridiculous, but in a separate notebook so that I actually remember what to talk about because it's like a medium size. There was, there was quite a bit to it, um, but I loved this book. I had such a great time reading this. So many awesome characters, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this with you guys today. All right, so fingers crossed everything goes well. We'll dive into a synopsis of the book and then get in deeper to the book, so let's get started. All right, so let's start with a synopsis. So basically, The Outsider is about a place called Flint City. I believe it is Oklahoma. It's fictional. And they have just had a really grisly murder of a young boy. And they are pretty sure they know exactly who did it. Like, there were tons of witnesses, tons of forensic evidence. I mean, they pretty much got it. And it's not somebody that you would expect, but at the same time, they've got all this evidence that they cannot possibly be wrong. The problem is that when they bring this guy in for questioning, he has a super solid alibi. Like, so solid that now they're just super confused because he seems to have been in two places at once. But they all know that it's just not possible for this man to have been in two places at once. Like, that's just not how the world works. So they're incredibly confused, and it leads them down this journey of trying to figure out who really committed these murders and how it happened and why there seems to be such strong evidence for this man to have been at the crime scene as well as so far from the crime scene at the same time. And it kind of leads them on this semi-supernatural adventure to figure out what is going on and how this outsider is infiltrating their community and putting the blame on upstanding citizens of not only their community, but of uh, communities all around the country. So that's the basic synopsis. And it's it's a pretty wild adventure, I must say. And I, I think it's, oh! Um, I think it's definitely worth the read. It was a fun adventure with a lot going on all at the same time. But in typical, wonderful Stephen King kind of fashion. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but it's it's good stuff. Like, a really good read. So, I'm going to go ahead and get dive in a little bit deeper now. So, if you don't want anything spoiled for you, go ahead and go forward until it says no more spoilers. Uh, if you watched my video last week, I realized that I forgot to put that in there. It was a crazy week, and the editing process just did not go like I thought it was going to go. So, hopefully, if you didn't want things spoiled for you in my last video, you were able to kind of figure out where to come back in. If not, I'm really sorry. It just, it was a wild week, and, and it just didn't happen. I realized it after I had already begun uploading it to YouTube so it just was what it was but there should be a no more spoilers section this time so you can skip forward to that if you don't want the book spoiled for you if you've already read this book or you just don't care then stay with me because we're gonna dive into a couple of deeper things and keep going on these muffins Okay, you know I like to call myself out for something that could potentially go wrong in the future. I'm supposed to add milk, but I'm doing almond milk because that's all that I have. Uh, and I just, I already had all these ingredients. So typical me, I was not going to go to the store just for milk. So hopefully that doesn't backfire. But in the case that these don't turn out super well, culprit number one could very well be the almond milk that we're using instead of regular milk. Now you know. So at first with this book, I had a really tough time 
because if you have been with me for a while, you'll go back to the If It Bleeds book, which I think was the first Stephen King book that I did. Now, that book was the one that had the four short stories, and one of the short stories was the actual title, If It Bleeds. That story, um, unfortunately, gave away uh, quite a bit to this story. Well, I don't know. I mean, quite a bit actually might be an exaggeration, but I would say I at least knew who the villain was, and I, I pretty much guessed why things were happening the way they were happening. So if you read If It Bleeds, I just know that. I, I would definitely still read this book because it was so really good. It's just that automatically, I think what happened for me is I just got really angry because I knew that Terry didn't do it. Like I knew it was the outsider the whole time. And they were accusing Terry like this well-loved citizen and coach and father and husband of doing this really horrible deed to this little boy. And I knew he he didn't do it and they made this like whole big scene and you know made out themselves to be heroes because they figured out who killed this boy and all of this stuff and I was so furious because I, I knew he didn't do it so I don't know if you would feel the same if you hadn't read if it bleeds like if this was your first look into something like The Outsider. If it was, let me know if you were as angry as I was or if you were just like confused or whatever was going on because I was honestly furious. I was like, how could you be that stupid to make this huge scene of his arrest and not even check his fucking alibi? Like I was so mad for, for like a good first quarter of the book, honestly. But you know, obviously what I didn't really expect was for things to go the way they did at the courthouse when you know he was brought out he was being brought to the court i really don't know how to pronounce that word so i'm just gonna say like to see if he was gonna have a trial you all know what i mean but the scene at the courthouse i was honestly shocked i mean i was kind of already shocked before that because i didn't expect for the peterson mom to die like she just she just went and i was like oh no like that's awful i was like oh Okay. And then on top of that, you have this whole spectacle, which, which again was so infuriating because I just want to be like, you know, Ralph is already having doubts and yet he's acting like they have to treat this man like a hardened criminal. Otherwise, you know, they won't have been doing their jobs effectively. And he says multiple times, like once we get past all this, that he should not have brought him around the front. They should not have made a public arrest. Like they should not have made this much of a spectacle about it because of course like this killing was really brutal so of course people are furious and they want to get the whole story so you have all these people out there being dangerous and then you have I think it was Ollie Peterson his little brother is dead his mom is dead and his dad is obviously devastated so of course when he knows like this public trial is going on what did you think was gonna happen like it just it it made me so furious because it was handled so poorly and I'm not trying to like come at law enforcement I know some of y'all might still be mad at me for my a time for mercy video so like calm your tits I'm not coming for law enforcement but I just like these particular characters made a really bad decision but at the same time I did not expect for Terry to die I really thought he was gonna be like part of the whole thing and helping clear his name and you know going through this whole process with everybody I did not expect him to just flat out die like that. I mean, Ollie wasn't as much of a surprise because he was the shooter. And a lot of times, like, if you're, you're gonna, good or bad, you're gonna get taken down, like, you're the shooter. But I did not expect Terry to die. One thing that I did really enjoy was having Holly in the story. I don't know if I mentioned this when I did If It Bleeds, but I think I did. I was never, like, the hugest fan of her in the Mr. Mercedes series where she comes from, uh, originally in Stephen King stories, just because, you know, she is a little bit, like, OCD, a little neurotic, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I don't function that way, and so it, it sometimes it's hard for me to read characters that function that way, which probably sounds terrible, but, like, that's just the truth of it. But I actually really liked her in this story. I liked that she came in with, like, a clear 
clear, open mind because of everything that she had been through before, which I don't want to spoil because I, I definitely want to do the Mr. Mercedes series on here at one point because it's a lot of fun. But she came in with just such more open mind and like was so smart and so prepared to take on this outsider. And I feel like I just, I feel like I was surprised by myself at how much I enjoyed having her there. I also really enjoy this particular villain. Like I, I don't want... You know, obviously this is the first time Stephen King has used this outsider. And then If It Bleeds being the second time. But, oh, sorry if that's a spoiler for If It Bleeds. But, like, I guess you should have gone back and watched that video first. I don't know. Anyway, you know, it's not the first time. And I don't want him to, like, overuse it. But I also hope that maybe we get me, like, one more story. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be with these characters. Although they are like excellent characters but just like this is a really great villain you know because it, taking the face and the form of others like that's that's some crazy stuff you know and so I I just think that it's it would be fun to see this villain crop up again in the future for sure I definitely did not expect for Jack Hoskins I think that's it to be such a big deal like, I really thought he would just kind of be, like, a nuisance, and then they would, like, take him down. I did not think that he was gonna be, like, such a pain in the ass, basically. I mean, he kills, you know, two characters, and, like, even with his obvious cancer burning through him, as well as the snake bite, like, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> like, I just, I did not expect him to be that big of a character, but then he ended up being because he was tracking them down and, you know, trying to take care of the outsider's business for him or her. Do you think outsiders have genders? I mean, this one was always guys, so they must, but maybe they don't. And I mean, like, I know this sounds terrible, but I did not feel bad for him when, like, the snake came back around and got him. Like, I think I actually laughed out loud just because, like, how stupid. Just, I mean, I know that was kind of the whole thing is, like, his mind was kind of going because he had, like, the cancer and, you know, the outsider was kind of in his mind or whatever or in his head. But... I just like laughed when he got bit by the snake because I was like, honestly, my dude, that's what you get. I kind of felt bad for Ralph that he had to take him down though because I just feel like Ralph already had so much going on. Like, I just feel like he didn't deserve to have to kill this man when he already had so much else going on. You know, like why, why couldn't he have just died like falling down the hill or something like that? I know that probably would have been a lot more anticlimactic. But I think I also would have been okay with it just because I felt bad for Ralph at that point. I like that there was the return of the happy slapper. Um, if you know Mr. Mercedes, uh, then you recognize it, obviously. I guess if you haven't read the Mr. Mercedes, there's a little bit spoiled for you in, in this book. So if you don't want that to happen, um, I mean, if you haven't already read the book, obviously if you're here, you might have. But if you're just with me because you just enjoy watching my crappy baking then be careful reading this book before reading the Mr. Mercedes series now the Mr. Mercedes series is a lot more disturbing but this did give some away but if you've already read all of that I love this return of the happy slapper which is basically a, a sock with ball bearings in it because I didn't know how they were gonna get rid of this guy I mean it was like okay a gunshot are they gonna risk it and then I thought maybe Holly keeps yelling out because she thinks that if she yells at the right time like a big piece will fall on the outsider and will kill the outsider for them. I wasn't sure. I just, I didn't know where it was all going. So I liked that when she just like beat the shit out of him with the happy slapper, I was like, yes, you go girl. Like she, she just went for it. And I, I was like, I didn't even really see that coming. I guess I kept forgetting she was wearing her jacket and that she, it obviously had a lot of bigger pockets than I imagined. I'm imagining like, oh, an actual woman's blazer. Women don't get real pockets, right? So I'm thinking like, oh, you might be able to carry a flashlight in it, but it'd be kind of sticking out. But these are obviously very very deep pockets because she had that thing with her the whole time and I absolutely loved it I, I thought it was phenomenal of a beautiful death I mean gross I'm sure you know and I I'm not surprised that both characters end up having nightmares like the little worm things but still like excellent all the same the one thing I really liked too was that I felt a lot of relief 
for Terry's family at the end of it all because I got to this point where it was like okay you're obviously going to be able to clear his name among this group of people who you know figured everything out and believe everything but how are you going to clear his name for the whole town and for his family for his daughters you know to keep living their lives in the same town and so I liked that we went back to that and that everybody kind of came up with an idea of how to make people believe that Terry really wasn't the culprit and I like that they threw in a bit of reality as well like not everybody is going to believe it some people like I think it was the older lady and the little girl definitely stuck to their stories and like you know people in the town are obviously going to believe it because that's just how people work that that people get it into their heads and they can't get it out of their heads. I think we talked about that in A Time for Mercy, how it's like people didn't even know the whole details of the case, but automatically this man was guilty. You know, like Marcy, his wife talks about having trouble finding somebody for the girls to stay with because even her closest friends completely like shut her off and people started blaming her thinking, oh, how could you not know that your husband was this maniac killer? And it goes back to what we were talking about with like trial by media, because as soon as somebody hear something they automatically believe it just because they've been told that they don't do any thinking or research on their own and this was another case of that stuff like that makes me so irritated because it's just like you're an adult like you should be able to think for yourself and do the research and then make a decision and if you make the same decision as everybody else that's fine but at least have the decency to make it yourself instead of just hearing what other people are saying and jumping on the bandwagon so I was really grateful that we got relief for Terry's family and that like his wife and kids will probably be okay there's there may not be the perfect place for them anymore in in this town because there's always going to be people who think he was guilty and he's not alive to you know defend himself it's it's just the word of the same people who accused him in the first place you know the attorney and the detectives and all of that so I can understand that there are going to be people who just like refuse to believe he was innocent but I am grateful that at least a lot of people will start to come around and you know apologize to Marcy and her kids and, and want to be in their lives again I just realized though that we didn't get relief for the Peterson family. Like we don't really know if the dad is still alive or not. Like he was when we left him earlier in the story though in a coma that people didn't think he would come out of, but still he was alive. And now I don't think we ever really got a, a say one way or the other of how he ended up. I would assume poorly, I would assume he eventually will die on life support, but we definitely did not get and into that that's the only thing I would have liked maybe just to know like okay he passed away peacefully or he's recuperating he woke up just one or the other just like in quick passing to let us know what went on but other than that I mean I feel like we got a, a whole well-rounded story which is something I do feel like Stephen King is so good at that he just knows how to make a story come full circle from beginning to end okay if you left because of spoilers go ahead and come back and join us my muffins came out of the oven and they are certainly not pretty, but they do appear to be done. So I'm looking forward to, to biting into them and seeing what happens. Let's see. This one looks semi-normal. Okay, let's take a close-up look. So looking pretty good, right? You can kind of see... You can kind of see the sugar and, and brown sugar combo thing that I was supposed to put on top of all of them. It's a little bit more in certain places. Definitely the ones in the back of the oven got way more done than the ones in the front, but that's just life. Okay, let's see. They're pretty good. Crispy on the outside, but definitely more moist on the inside. It makes me wonder if, this is something my fiance said, that maybe the frozen blueberries that I used with my blueberry muffins took a lot of the moisture out of my muffins. So they weren't as moist and, and tended to be a little drier just because of that. Whereas with these chocolate chips, it's just chocolate. So, you know, it's not really taking anything from anywhere. I would definitely say these were a success. They're certainly not attractive. I'm sure you can see that. I don't really have the utensils to make them the cute little rounded tops that they're supposed to be, but I didn't really expect them to be attractive. I mean, they're muffins. They're not cupcakes or cakes or anything like that. You know, muffins are not always super attractive, but they do taste good and I think they'll be good to share. So I'm happy about that. I definitely recommend this book. Now, if you went away, let me repeat something that I said in the other parts of the video. I would love to do a video about the Mr. Mercedes series someday. And if you haven't read that yet, 
definitely recommend it, but this will definitely give some of it away. So if you're interested in the Mr. Mercedes series, same author, Stephen King, I would read that first and then go into this because one of the main characters from that series is in this book and it's like multiple years later. So it kind of gives away the things that happened in the Mr. Mercedes series. Now, if you've also read If It Bleeds, which I did a video on before, like the actual story, If It Bleeds, you're definitely not going to be surprised by the villain of the story. Um, it, it definitely gives it away. But I still think it's worth the read. It was still a lot of fun. It was really good story from beginning to end. So I really like this one and, and I was in a rush to get it finished today, but it really wasn't a problem because I was so hooked. If you had fun today, definitely hit like and subscribe. I try to do this every week and it's a little bit of a hot mess, a little bit of fun, some baking and some books. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye.